The legacy of Steelers linebacker James Harrison came to an end in Pittsburgh on Saturday when the Steelers released the five-time Pro Bowl player in what was mostly a salary cap-related move. I'm Neil Kulong with Behind the Steel Curtain. James Harrison reportedly declined an offer of a 30% pay cut with incentives to make the money back for the Steelers this season, instead testing his luck on the free agency market. And you know what? Somebody's going to get a good player in free agency if they sign James Harrison. But they're not going to have the memories that the Steelers fans have had of Harrison over the last several years. Harrison was undrafted in 2002, bounced around the Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, getting cut four times and playing in NFL Europe before an injury to Steelers linebacker Clark Hagens brought him to the Steelers roster for the beginning of the season in 2004. At that time, Joey Porter, the loud, brash, borderline obnoxious Steelers linebacker, was the attitude and soul of that Steelers team. Harrison backed him up quietly doing his job the best that he could in the time that he got in there. Porter got in a fight with Cleveland Browns running back William Green before a game that put Harrison onto the field for his first sack and he didn't f first start of his career and he didn't fare too badly. He didn't get a sack but he racked up six tackles and showed people that he belonged out on that field. In 2005 back in Cleveland a Browns fan mistakenly wandered too close to the man they called Silverback and Harrison planted him on the ground in a move that had to have shattered the guy's collarbone. For as drunk as he was, he got up afterwards and said to news reporters that the reason he did it is that he was stupid and he hated seeing Pittsburgh beat the Browns. James Harrison would go on to torment the Browns throughout his career, knocking several of them out and laying waste in just about any way that he could all over that franchise. Harrison probably lost the overall battle against left tackle Joe Thomas, but Harrison wasn't about rushing the passer as much as people want to suggest that he was during his time with the Steelers. He had 64 career sacks, which is no doubt impressive, but it was Harrison's ability to stop the run that really made him valuable in that defense. He was an anchor on the defensive right side of the Steelers line, giving them some of the best rush defense statistics in the league during the time that he played. James Harrison will be remembered certainly for his bright personality, even though he wouldn't speak much, whenever he spoke, people listened to him. One of the big ones that we'll all remember is his suggestion in Men's Health Magazine that he would not piss on Roger Goodell if he was on fire. That's an opinion that he probably still would keep today because that's James Harrison. James Harrison doesn't waver from his opinion. He won't hold it back if you ask him about it, and he's not going to change. He's never been a guy to show that giving up or relenting in any kind of way is going to get him anywhere. Keep in mind, he was cut four times, twice from the Steelers and twice from the Ravens, and was playing in NFL Europe, contemplating quitting the game before he finally made a roster at age 26. Harrison fought so hard throughout his career, he had a 100-yard interception return in Super Bowl 43 that I'm convinced he would not have made the 100 yards he needed if he would not have forced to deal with the kind of adversity that he was throughout his career. Larry Fitzgerald probably would have taken him down after 97 or 98 yards. The Steelers would not have been in a situation for Ben Roethlisberger to get all the heroics of that game with the touchdown pass to Santonio San Holmes, if not for Harrison's touchdown return. That also fits Harrison's legacy, though. He made spectacular plays, the kinds of plays that you never thought he would have made, and he usually did it in the backdrop of something else. People want to continue to label James Harrison a thug, which is completely ignorant and inappropriate. Thug is somebody who robs, cheats, and beats other people without any regard for the law. James Harrison did what the league paid him to do up until week five of, of the 2010 season when he hit two Browns players so hard they fell down onto the ground, passed out. Nobody says anything about the fact the NFL was selling pictures of those games immediately after they were played. All they did was end up finding him, Dante Robinson, and Brandon Merriweather a, a lump sum of $200,000 after those games for the newly found safety initiative that the league had just launched. They claim that these, these hits have been illegal since the game had started, which is blatantly not true, considering hits like that had gone on many times before that, many seasons, many years before James Harrison came along. He's been labeled a scapegoat, which will also be part of his legacy. He is the face of the new safety NFL. Now that James Harrison's out of the way of Pittsburgh, maybe that negative influence will inspire him to play more cleanly in the future. 
or perhaps the league might look back on his career and say he was a fantastic player in his time with the Steelers. While he might not be Hall of Fame worthy, he was a guy who played the game the way everyone else had been playing it up to that point and had a lot of success. What, what will no doubt be a part of his legacy is the fact that he is the only undrafted player to ever be named Defensive Player of the Year, which is something the league absolutely cannot take away from him. If it's something that the rest of the league or fans of other teams cannot deal with, that's fine. Steelers fans don't really care. James Harrison's our guy. He always been, has been our guy. And as painful as it is to see him go, we wish him the best wherever else he's going to be. With Behind the Steel Curtain, I'm Neil Kulong.